Blessings and welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle and Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're continuing our study tonight through the Red Letter series. We are discussing the words of Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. And so obviously it's important for us to understand what his commandments are, not only what they are, but why he gave them to us. What is the ultimate means of them? Uh, it certainly is not to work our way into heaven, but we have been promised that we'll be rewarded according to our works. So we are establishing our treasure in heaven. Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, but lay up for yourself treasures in heavens. And how do we do this? We do this by our level of obedience. So we want to pick up tonight again in, um, in Matthew chapter 6. And the truth that is given to us here presents itself in many different forms. So rather than read the entire passage, I'm going to read a portion of the passage and then discuss it. Move on to the second portion of the passage and discuss it. So if you will, open your Bibles. And let's begin reading at Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Take heed. Now, that's a warning. Take heed. Okay, stop and consider that you do not your alms, which in the Greek is your good deeds, that you do not your alms, your good deeds, before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. So the Father seeks to reward us. But the only way we're going to receive that reward, if what we do is private in our relationship between us and the Father. If we do this with the motive to be seen and recognized and praised by men and women here on this earth, we've received our reward. Because we all feel good when we do something good, and we certainly feel good when someone pats us on the back. We all love a pat on the back. But that's our reward. And what the Bible's telling us here, what Messiah is telling us here, is that if we receive that reward, that earthly reward, that earthly praise, that earthly recognition, we've lost the reward that could have been set for us in heaven. Now, if you're familiar with this passage at all, and you've been reading along with us, you'll recognize that there seems to be somewhat of a contradiction here. And the reason I say that is because you should remember in chapter 5, around verse 15 or 16, we were discussing the fact that we are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the world. And let's look at verse 16 real quick. Let your light so shine before men. Well, now what is your light? Your light is your good works. And your good works are seen by your humility, by your compassion, by your mercy, by your patience, by your goodness and your kindness, right? By your brokenness. Let your light, your good works, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Well, that sounds like a contradiction, right? Let's go back in the, and look at verse 1. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. What's the difference here? To be seen of them. It's all about your motive. In verse 1 of chapter 6, let not your light, your good works, be done before men to be seen of them. If your motive is to be seen, recognized, and praised, that's the reward that you'll receive. But surely, the good works that you do will be seen by men. But if your motive is not to be seen by men, but it's simply to be obedient to the commands of your king, then, friends, your reward is great and laid up for you in heaven. Okay, well, let's move on. Verse 2. Therefore, when you do do your good deeds, do not sound a trumpet before thee. Look at me, right? Praise me. Pat me on the back. No, what the Bible tells us is that we should always be promoting others. We should always be stepping back out of the limelight and shining the light on others. Our argument with each other shouldn't be over the fact that we want to receive the praise, the glory, and the recognition, but it should be trying to put it on someone else, them not wanting to receive it and wanting to give us back to us. Does, does that make sense? 
Therefore, when you do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues. And in the streets, that they may have glory of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when you do your alms, let not your left hand know what your right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and your father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Well, let's continue to read, because not only are we to do our, our good deeds only in an in a act of obedience to our king, to be seen of our king, and truly our heart's attitude is to receive no recognition from men whatsoever. And that can be tough. That can be a battle. That's something that you're going to have to take before the Father and you're going to have to pray about that he'll remove that desire to be recognized and praised in you and give you a true heart to see others receive the praise and the glory. And that goes against the flesh because the flesh wants to be heralded. The flesh wants the spotlight. But we're not to be in the flesh. We're to be in the spirit. And the spirit is always about others, always promoting others always looking for um, the good in others. But let's look at verse 5. It says, Now not only your good deeds, but when you pray, do not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But you, when you pray, enter into your closet, and when you shut your door, pray to your Father which is in secret, and your father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard of for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye. And of course we go into the Lord's Prayer. But let's back up for a moment. Let's just discuss this because I think this is important. Jesus says, look, the whole issue here." Is a, is a simple five-letter word, and it's the very heart of the enemy of your soul. When you go all the way back to Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, you're going you're gonna to see that Lucifer proclaims to the Father, I will excel above you. I will take your throne. I will defeat you. I will ascend above the stars of the heavens. I will be the one that receives all the praise, all the glory. I will become God of the universe, and I will overthrow you. you, you do you hear all the eyes in that? And so the simple word that Messiah is trying to get us to understand here is one of pride. You see, it's pride that seeks the recognition of men. It's pride that wants to pat on the back for a job well done. It's all about pride, and the very opposite of pride is humility. Now, the Bible tells us, and we've discussed this in previous videos, the Bible tells us that we're to have the Spirit of Christ. If we do not have the Spirit of Christ, we do not belong to him. Well, Christ had no pride, friends. He had humility. He was full of humility, and that should be our prayer. Father, please make us full of humility. Destroy, eliminate all pride from within our souls. And so Messiah says, I want you to be on the lookout. Take heed. I want you to be aware of this, of this deceptive attitude, spirit of pride that can envelop you, that can dominate you. And you'll see it in, in your good deeds. You'll see it in the amount of tithes that you pay. You'll see it in, in your prayers. You'll see it in the way that you behave in public, at, in, in a public worship service. Uh, you'll 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 recognize it, and it 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 inhabits so much of quote unquote the people of God, the services of God, the normal church service, and yet most people don't even recognize it. We see it through praise, we see it through worship, we see it through through uh, singing, we see it through preaching, we see it through teaching. We see it certainly through prayer, which is what Messiah is discussing here. And so what he's saying is, look, I want you to go into your prayer closet. And even in your prayer closet, pride can raise its ugly head to where you're trying to be so specific in how you present your prayer before the Father that it's all about the words that you're speaking that are landing on your ear so that 
you're praying to be heard. Even, even maybe by yourself, you're still praying to be heard. And what did Messiah say? Messiah said the greatest prayer that we have recorded in the Bible was simply this. Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's what he said. He said, two men went into the temple, fell before the altar and began to talk to the almighty. And the one man said, oh, I'm so thankful I'm not like the rest of these and began, pride was the element of his prayer. But then the one poor soul fell before the almighty, couldn't even lift his head to look in the face of the almighty, beat his chest and said, oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That, my friends, is the heart of prayer. Not to be heard. It's not about the eloquence of your tongue. It's not about the articulation of the way that you say things. It's about the spirit. It's about the brokenness of your heart. It's about the humility of your soul. It's understanding that you are a mere worm. He is the Almighty. You deserve nothing. And He pours all His mercy all his goodness, all his kindness, all his compassion out upon you. How undeserving we are. So friends, what can we take away from this tonight? It's simply this. Be on the lookout. Be very aware of the pride that exists within your heart. You may see it in the way that you do your hair. You may see it in the way that you dress. You may see it in the jewelry that you wear, the makeup that you wear, the fingernail polish that you wear. You may see it by the way you behave in church, how many amens you say, how loud you shout, how many tongues you speak. I mean, do you know that, that Jesus said, look, when you pray in the natural tongue, go into your closet where no man can hear or see you. And yet the whole charismatic Pentecostal movement is built around tongues and you can walk into most of these churches on any given Sunday and you will hear a plethora of tongues being spoken all around you. And that breaks the very word of God. The word of God says, if there's not an interpreter there, you keep silent. Now they want to argue, well, this is unknown tongue and it's a prayer language and it's a difference. And Jesus said, look, it's all pride. The, 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 the spirit is subject to the prophet. Keep quiet, keep your tongue before you and the Father, and watch how it drives your flesh crazy, insane, because your flesh wants to speak it, so that others around you will hear it, and in the depths of your soul, in the depths of your heart, you know what I'm saying is true. So friends, what can we take away from this? Pride is an ugly thing, and it exists. It exists in everything that we do, everything that we have, the way that we carry ourselves, the cars that we drive, the homes that we live in, the clothes that we wear, the food that we eat, the way that we walk, the way that we talk, the way that we act, the things that we watch, everything. The crux of the matter is always pride. Friend, be on the lookout. Be very, very careful because pride is the enemy of your soul. It's the enemy of our souls as the people of God. And Jesus is warning us here to be very careful that we are not hypocritical and that it's not about us. It's all about him. You remember the song that was written many years ago? Uh, um, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It was all about me. Now it's all about you. That's the heart of worship. It's all about Jesus. If Jesus isn't receiving the praise and the glory, then it's false. It's wrong. It's an idol. And we need to rid our lives from it. We need to fall before the Father and say, God, I recognize it. I don't like it. It's ugly. I don't even like to admit it. That in itself is pride. Oh, God, create in me a clean heart. Renew your spirit within me. Let me be a man of humility and erase all pride from my life. And show me where pride exists. And check and challenge me so that once I recognize it, I can crucify it and be a little bit more like my Savior and a little bit less like me. I love you, friends. Please continue to pray for us. We will continue to lift you to the Father as well. And until next time, I'll see you on the next video.